Well, we see right now the peripheral countries in Europe in this uh, debt and austerity spiral. And there's a lot of concern about whether the uh, European currency system will, will be maintained. Some who are highly skeptical or negative are very critical of financial speculation and investors and are advocating now a return to capital controls, a disaggregation of the different financial markets rather than, what you might say, moving forward and integrating further, integrating banking systems and supervision, integrating treasuries and so forth. Do you see a risk of that uh, fragmenting? Not only risk, it's already happening. We see some of the measures that are implemented by, by authorities in, in the home countries of these banks, but also in the host countries. Uh, of the subsidiaries of these banks, we are in a, almost like a, a mini war in, in terms of regulatory measures, and part of that is really effectively capital control. So, yes, I think we're going to see much more of this. All of this is not necessarily uh, bad. I mean, there may be, uh, you know, some of these capital controls can be helpful to, to uh, uh, maybe slow down change, uh, allow uh, uh, regulated supervisors, maybe private sector also to adjust, but. But I think it is worrying that we see it on, on a scale and it's uncontrolled and, and, and happening in, 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 a, in a situation where different authorities are fighting it out instead of you know, thinking through what are the long-term uh, implications. of the, the damage would be essentially a, a divestiture of cross-border banking. Yeah. I think this is uh, something that we really have to be prepared for, that uh, cross-border banking is not going to look the same after the crisis as it looked before the crisis. It's, it's, uh, you know, for the European banks, this is the high-risk activity. It's high-risk because there is not an uh, institutional framework, there are no regulation and supervision working at the level of, of, of uh, the cross-border banks, you know, above the national levels. And when we don't have that kind of framework, these activities become very risky. You don't, you don't have, there's no consistency between resolution schemes in different countries. There is, uh, you know, it's very hard to, to think of how do you, would you actually you know, this we talk about living wills. How do we design a living will for an institution that has, you know, 19 systemic subsidiaries in different countries? It's, it's very complex, and that's what ri makes these activities risky. As, as long as we don't have a framework to deal with it, it's going to be risky. Uh, uh, regulators going to clamp down, national regulators going to clamp down, both in home countries and in host countries. You're going to see also, I think, shareholders becoming more uh, skeptical about these kind of activities. And we're going to maybe in Europe, and it maybe it's not all bad, but it's, you know, it could have some long-term ramifications. We may see a system of, of banking that is much more of a sort of utility type banking in Europe, a different trade-off between risk and returns. What is concerning from an Eastern European perspective is that in, if you look at how did this see, uh, region grow, well, it was very much through capital flows from Western Europe through Eastern Europe. And the safest and most stable way, other than foreign direct investment, is uh, bank flows through these strategic banks. So we saw in the crisis, uh, immediately after the Lehman collapse, you know, the bond markets collapsed, the syndicated bank markets disappeared, the non-strategic banks disappeared. And, and what we risk now with you know, cross-border banking uh, dying down, that these countries will not be able to grow and converge in the same way that they have done because of this. And, and of course, in the long term, we want them to raise funds locally, but it's going to take time. And if these countries will have to rely exclusively on savings from their own economies, it's going to take a much longer time. We're talking about decades longer to, for them to converge to your, uh, Western European standards. When is your next transition report? When is it on schedule? For well, so it's, it's all, um, normally we publish this in, in, in November. and. Uh, we, we have not decided yet actually what, what uh, topic uh, to address. We, you know, we want to be timely and then see what, what, what trends there are. And, and we were very lucky this time, I think, to have find a topic that I think is, is highly timely, very important for the region, and important for us to understand how can we mitigate the impact on people's lives and people's beliefs in the next phases of the crisis. Well, thank you for coming here and sharing with us uh, an update on your results at this very treacherous and, uh, and difficult time. And uh, we look forward to continuing the conversation with you again next year. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.